previously seen how people from all regions of India are members of the Lok Sabha, irrespective of caste, creed, sex, religion or region. So you must be thinking, how are the members of Lok Sabha elected? What is common between these people? How do you get into the Lok Sabha? So in this video, we will learn about the qualifications and the disqualifications for members of the Lok Sabha. So the first criteria to contest for a Lok Sabha election is that you have to be a citizen of India. Do you know that King George I was the ruler of Britain who was born and brought up in present day Germany. He did not know the English culture nor the English language. He was so alienated from the people of England that it became very difficult for him to become the ruler. This made him very unpopular and he was an unsuccessful ruler. So you must understand that it is important for a person to know the country and to stay in the country to rule that country. Do you think a French person can make policies and laws for the people of India? Certainly not. This is because the French person will not know about the needs, demands or wishes of the citizens of India. So it is very important that a person who has stayed in India in the country and knows about the people and the country becomes the member of the Lok Sabha. Do you know in many countries it is imperative that the president or the prime minister is a natural born citizen of the country. For example in USA to become the president to contest in the elections you have to be a natural born citizen of the country. However in India that is not the rule. You don't have to be naturally born in India but you have to be a citizen of this country. A very famous example is that of Sonia Gandhi. She is the president of All India Congress who is an Italian born Indian politician and has already been a member of the Lok Sabha. The second criteria is that of age. Do you know that King Tutankhamun of Egypt became a ruler of Egypt when he was only 9 years old? Just like him, many other kings and emperors became rulers at a very young age when their fathers died. But they did not actually rule their country. They had to be guided and advised by their senior family members or relatives. So we know that a certain age is required to get a position of responsibility. You need to be mature enough to be in that place. So, the constitution provides an age criteria for becoming a member of the Lok Sabha, which is 25 years. To contest for the Lok Sabha elections, you have to be at least 25 years of age. This will ensure that you have the know-how and the maturity to take the responsibilities that come with the post. However, the minimum age for voting is 18 years in India. But the framers of the eligibility criteria believed that even after getting the voting experience, we need to stay in the voting zone and to understand the process of elections and everything so that we become more used to the process of elections in India and then get the responsibilities that come with becoming a Lok Sabha member. Do you know who is the youngest Lok Sabha member? Chandrani Murmu from Odisha became the youngest member of Lok Sabha when she won a seat in her general elections at the age of 25. We also have other young members like Mimi Chakraborty, Nusrat Jahan and Tejasvi Surya who have proven that politics is not just for the older generation. If I ask you who is a criminal, what would you say? A criminal is someone who breaks the law. You must also remember what the main function of the legislature is. It is to make laws. So what do you think will happen if the people who break the laws make the laws? The system will obviously become very corrupt. 
a Lok Sabha member on an average represents 25 lakh people. Now, do you think a criminal should represent 25 lakh people? This would lessen the dignity and the respect of the parliament as well as that of India. However, the makers of the constitution who created these eligibility criteria were also not against giving second chances. Your past should not influence your present. So if a person was convicted of a crime and has been imprisoned for two years or less, they can still contest for the post of a Lok Sabha member. You must be surprised to know that about 50% of the people who have been elected through the 2019 Lok Sabha elections have pending criminal records. Aren't these rates very alarming? However, it is very important to note that these are pending criminal cases and not criminal records or cases that have been proved yet. Another criteria is that a contestant should have the name in one of the voter lists of any parliamentary constituency in India, which basically means that they should be regularly voting in elections. Our most important responsibility in a democratic country as citizens is to vote regularly, which means that we have to vote to elect representatives who will work for us and represent us in the parliament. Through this criteria, the contestant has to prove that they are regularly voting and thus a very responsible citizen of the nation. An office of profit is a position that brings to a person some financial gain. A member of Lok Sabha cannot hold an office of profit under the government of India or any state. This is done to ensure that the confidential information that comes with being a member of Lok Sabha is protected and so that the MP cannot influence the decisions or the bills that are passed through the Lok Sabha that will eventually turn into laws. So to prevent this from happening, a member of Lok Sabha cannot hold an office of profit. Let's see a case regarding this where Sonia Gandhi had to resign because of holding an office of profit. In 2004, Sonia Gandhi was a member of the National Advisory Council of India, which is a government body that advises the Prime Minister regarding his administrative roles. In 2004, Sonia Gandhi also got elected to the Lok Sabha. There was a lot of controversy regarding her post in the NSE. After a lot of criticism and uproar from other political parties, Sonia Gandhi eventually resigned from her post as Lok Sabha member in 2006. This controversy resulted because the NSE is under the government and no member of the Lok Sabha can hold an office of profit under the government of India or any state. However, some time later, a committee gave a clean chit to Sonia Gandhi because the NSE was only an advisory body to the Prime Minister which provided recommendations on how to run the government and did not provide any financial gains or salaries. The eligibility criteria also bars people of unsound mind from contesting the elections. A sound mind or sound person is someone who takes rational and logical decisions. The term unsound mind has not been clearly described in the constitution. However, we can understand that it is meant to do with someone having mental illness or insanity. The framers of the eligibility criteria didn't want people with mental illnesses to have certain huge responsibilities that come with the post of a member of Lok Sabha. Do you think that this is the right decision? Or do you think that this will add to the stigma around mental illnesses? Considering that about 150 million people of India suffer from severe mental illnesses. So, 
a person of unsound mind cannot become a member of the Lok Sabha. The person who is contesting for the Lok Sabha elections should also be able to meet his or her financial requirements. He should have a no dues certificate from his electricity, his telephone and other bills. This is meant to ensure that the person is responsible and also financially stable to become an MP. Owing money from people and not being able to return them back or not being able to pay the dues on time is not a sign of a responsible citizen. Now that we've understood the criteria for qualification to become a member of Lok Sabha, let us go through the criteria for disqualification. The disqualifications are generally just the flip side of the qualifications. So the first one is that the person is under the age of 25. If someone has provided a false birth certificate or proof of age and it is later proved that a person was not 25 years of age when he was elected, they will be disqualified from being a member. The second one is that the person is not a citizen of India. Now we have learned that the person who is contesting for the post of Lok Sabha member has to be a citizen of India. If they are not a citizen of India because they have given a false document or if they cease to become a citizen of India after moving to a different country and getting the citizenship of that country, then they might be disqualified. The third point is that the person has an unsound mind. If it is proved in the court of law that the person elected has an unsound mind, he will be disqualified from his post. The fourth one is that a person holds an office of profit. Such as we learnt about Sonia Gandhi who had to resign because of this. If a member has an office of profit and that is later proved, then they might have to be disqualified from being a member of Lok Sabha. The fifth point is that the person is convicted as a criminal or imprisoned for two years or more. Now, in the judicial wing of India, there are a lot of cases that come every day and many of these cases get pending for years. If a member of Lok Sabha has had a pending criminal case which is later proved and he is convicted and given imprisonment for more than two years, then they will be disqualified from being a member of the Lok Sabha. Such an example is Lalu Prasad Yadav from the Rashtriya Janta Dal who was disqualified from being a Lok Sabha member after he was convicted of a crime and given imprisonment for five years. The last point is the person is in debt and financially unstable. If someone owes money from other people or has not cleared off their bills, then he is not a very responsible person and probably should not be given the responsibilities that come with the post of being a member of Lok Sabha. So they will be disqualified. Now that we've learned the disqualifications, we know that the legislature of India is a parliament and the members of parliament are elected to make laws. They are elected directly or through direct elections, which is similar to how a monitor of a class is selected. Let us see this through an example. The teacher asks the students of the class if any of them want to become a monitor. And Sam, Abhay and Reena volunteer or contest for the elections. All these students vote for one candidate each who they think will represent them best. After these votes are counted, Abhay gets the majority or the maximum number of votes and hence becomes the monitor of the class. All of us are aware about the universal adult franchise, which is that every citizen of India above the age of 18 is eligible to vote without discrimination on the basis of caste, religion, race or gender. 
the people of india elect their representatives to the lok sabha so as to represent them imagine that while the selection of monitor is happening in your class your friend is contesting with the most responsible student of the class if you knew that you would have to tell everyone who you were voting for then you would probably vote for your friend but if the voting was secret if no one had to know who you were voting for maybe you'd vote for the person who you know is more responsible and deserving of the post just like that the elections for the parliament are secret free and fair the secrecy is maintained so that no one can be pressurized or harassed to vote for a certain member all the elections of india are organized by the election commission of india the latest lok sabha elections took place in 2019 may being a member of the lok sabha is a full time government job so the members are given salaries and the salary pay is decided by the parliament itself they are also given certain allowances and benefits because they serve the people of the nation and fulfill their responsibilities towards the citizens of the country they are also given pensions after their retirement so that they can have a comfortable retired life and have financial stability along with these the members are also given certain allowances and benefits and their medical expenses travel expenses and accommodation expenses are also taken care of by the government now that we've covered all the qualifications and the disqualifications for a member of lok sabha and now are better equipped to understand the system and the qualifications and disqualifications do you think that there should be some other extra qualifications that should be added do you think that maybe an education qualification should be added to the criteria or do you think that adding the education qualification would become exclusionary and people who have not had the chance to have a certain amount of education will be left behind and their community will be marginalized even further what is your opinion discuss it with your friends Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. learn by games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now